Hello, here we are, Jeffrey Fox again, and we're now up to lesson 10 of unit two, giving a particular example of recommender systems as a key technology of the big data revolution. This is the big data applications and analytics course, uh, School of Informatics and Computing, Data Science Curriculum. And we're, as I say, we're doing the course motivation lesson 10, unit, unit two, section one. And if we look at many informatics area, one needs some sort of um, matching of, of our things. Namely, um, if we're doing buy, purchasing, we want to take people and match items they can purchase to them. And maybe we actually either don't have items, but collections of art items or collections of people. So we have various possibilities here, people to products, that's online and offline commerce. People to people, that's social networking. People to jobs, that's uh, things like uh, um, Monster or something, uh, job sites, matching people to jobs or employers. And then we want to have people plus their queries mapped to the, match to the internet, that's called search. So all of these are effectively recommendations. You're given uh, uh, an initial query, whether it's the name of a person or, a new, or the name of a product, you want to find related um, things in another space. It would be the space of things to buy, the space of people to, to know, the space of jobs to apply to, and so on. So that's recommender systems, they're a key technology. Interesting, they're not used nearly as much in science as they are in, the, in, the, in commodity, lifestyle, informatics. And uh, the, the, the dominant approach is called collaborative filtering. We'll discuss that in the, um, in the course. And then also the so-called K-nearest neighbor algorithm, which is one example of how to do collaborative filtering. So we Again, can give these examples, uh, given some action by the user, what they click on, uh, what they want to buy, you suggest similar things they might buy. Because uh, in like with Amazon, when you buy something or with the bookstore, you look at a book, they suggest similar books or similar things to buy. And you can do the same thing with movies, that's Netflix, uh, restaurants to eat at, events to go to. I don't say books and movies to buy. Uh, you can also do um, things like Google News, where you try to group sites uh, which are together in various categories and match those categories to users. And there's also some more sophisticated things, which uh, real supermarkets and online supermarkets do. You decide on discounts based on um, information you have on what sells well and what's not selling. And and that's again done by an analysis of existing habits. Uh, we have a LinkedIn or Facebook. I mean, LinkedIn is always sending me emails about people who want to, I should match to. And uh, so that's an example of identifying people they think are like me or I might be interested in connecting to. And career builder and monster we mentioned already. Matches between employers and employees. So this is the basic matching problem which recommend the systems. So I've often observed that everything in life is an optimization problem. Life itself is an optimization problem. And you can see survival of the species and things. Our species are optimized to solve problems, which uh, when meteor, meteorites hit the Earth and change things very rapidly, maybe they can't do. But anyway, um, and you can say when you live your life, you're optimizing happiness, you're, and so on. If we look, when we looked at the physics analysis, the earlier example, I showed a model fitted to the data, that's, that's an optimization problem, finding the parameters of the model. And that gave us the mass of the Higgs. And the result of the optimization problem was some measure of the, of the uh, test of the hypothesis that the Higgs existed and the mass of the Higgs. Uh, when I'm matching a user to jobs or books or to other users, 
That's an optimization problem. I'm finding the best users to match to a given user. Classification is an aspect of this, which is assigning of, a, of an ontology, a list of labels to uh, items, which can be, again, users or books or what have you. So that's an optimization problem. And in optimization, you have a function which you typically minimize or maximize the negative of the function, whatever, however you want to phrase it. Let's call it minimization or optimization. And often the key is to find an ingenious choice of function. Mother Nature's already got a natural function, the so-called free energy, which it um, gets the equations of physics come from minimizing that free energy. And as a result of this, when you're doing this, as we'll look at later, you often think of in these problems as these people or items as points in a space. This space is often a pretty abstract space. It doesn't have vectors with the normal properties with scalar products. Sometimes we call the space a bag. If like an information retrieval, we often talk about a bag of worlds. That's the words which in, to point out that uh, this particular space is doesn't have the elegant Euclidean properties of the real world spaces we're familiar with. But still as a space, and it's good to think of people as or items and things as a space. Often this space has huge dimension. The number of books on items on uh, Amazon is huge, and therefore a particular items in the, is, uh, so the, when you, what you find users interested in is a, a very large vector. So if we look at, um, here's a few slides from Netflix. Uh, and Netflix uh, says that everything is to do with recommender systems, and everything is data science. And it has, it gives you, um, this comes from a tutorial they gave, which will go into more detail in the, in the actual uh, course. And it gives recommendations in its, uh, in, with rankings of things it thinks you might be interested in, and it does that uh, noting uh, perceptively whether you're a household or a user, or it does both together, uh, which is probably the most efficient. Because uh, obviously one's children are more interested and interested in different things than you and so on. So this comes from Netflix, everything is a recommendation. The, the, ra the ranking is a recommendation, the rating is a recommendation, the row selection is a recommendation, the similarity and so on. And everything is done to make the user happy, because Netflix's goal is to maximize the money it gets. Uh, that money it's getting is typically gotten from users staying on Netflix and ordering more movies, which they pay money to Netflix to download. So it's very important for Netflix that it makes good suggestions. And it has all sorts of information, the context, which is implicit, explicit, what the user actually watched, and also the mix thereof. And it's also reasonably important to know why you made the recommendation. Some of the methods are discounted because they don't tell you why they made it, they're so abstract. And we also need to be certain to be diverse, cover a lot of, um, you know, we have a giant space, we don't want to prove, put all the points in one space. One part of the space, just choose science fiction. We may want to choose a note of the person, though we love science fiction, also has other interests. And freshness, we don't always want to suggest the same thing. We need to have um, changes. Okay, these remarks come from Netflix. Well, you probably, every, every person reading these uh, lectures knows about Netflix. Uh, just to remind you about its amazing status. Here we have some statistics. When I originally wrote this talk in 2013, uh, we were amazed by the 25 million or more subscribers. Well, it's now 150 million. It's actually struggling a little. It's not going up quite as fast as it used to. It's sort of leveled off a little uh, because it's possibly saturated. The uh, U.S. market and also finally big giants like Comcast and Disney and others are waking up and giving a run for its money. Uh, still, this pretty impressive note is actually more 60 million in the U.S. and uh, uh, 90 million 
internationally. So it actually has more outside the US than inside. Now, as I say this, the Chinese tariffs have gone on. I suspect Netflix is not subject to tariffs. I don't know. I, try, I wish it would be really possible to update some of these numbers here, but uh, it is very difficult to get updates to these numbers like hours watched and ratings delivered and things like that. Notice the big data. These recommender engines are based on ratings. Well, even in 2012, Netflix was getting 4 million ratings a day. Well, now it's probably 50 million ratings a day. I don't know. Something, some pretty large number, certainly 25 to 50. All right, well, that tells you Netflix is a big data company, and they can put a lot of resources to making the world's best recommender system because it's so important for their business model. By the way, Netflix does all its computing on Amazon. All Netflix, the, all Netflix is hosted on Amazon. They had this very famous competition, which was to improve their, their rating ratings and they gave a million dollars to the team that won it. This was in 2009. This has come through the site called Kegel, which we'll discuss in, in the lectures. And these, these group of people here won a million dollars. As far as I know, they um, did not release the result. They did not say actually what, what their proposal was. Netflix probably kept that proposal for internally. Um, they actually did in a very complicated fashion with, I think, some hundred different machine learning algorithms joined together. So here's this uh, team of great people who won that prize. And notice that Netflix says that data science is important. And they actually say their part of data science is consumer data science. And um, they start with a hypothesis that a certain approach a new algorithm for doing ranking or a new feature of the user interface will increase what they're trying to maximize, member engagement and member retention. Then they design a test and they test it. So actually this is a sort of A-B testing where um, Netflix will choose a small subset of their users because they have so many, remember they had 25 million or so on, that they will actually take a small subset of those users, probably scattered around, run their, run the, take this new algorithm, test it on that and see if it actually improves things. Maybe it makes things worse. And they're running all sorts of tests continuously. So they have a pretty interesting way of exploring the future. <coughs> and it's actually rather hard for academia to um, to, do, to replicate this, because we Abigail doesn't have 25 million people listening to what I'm saying. So they have a huge advantage in making quick progress, which is not so easy to know how you how you match this in academia. You just have to have great ideas, which are better than their ideas. So next, uh, we will go a little more theoretically on the recommender engines and spaces and uh, this is a very, this uh, I should point out the technology called MapReduce is very important in implementing recommender engines. Thank you very much.